Three hours north of Las Vegas, Nevada, is Tonopah, Nevada. 6,200 feet above sea level in the middle of nowhere. And the darkest skies in the country at the Stargazing Park. On the way, stop into Area 51 Alien Center. Tonopah, Nevada, an old silver mining town. Many struck it rich. Area 51, I saw something one night. A light in the night sky turned on a dime. I thought it was military. Maybe, maybe not. So Anthony, that you don't bet on him? I mean, come on. Uh, used to be the Red Sox winning the World Series, Polly. Hey, no more. The Red Sox won. I don't understand this Julie Bodge, you know. A week ago, she's up enough to buy a house in Vegas, a house in Florida. She can buy anything that she wants. Then she goes and uh, lets it all ride. I tell you, that's the problem with most of these card players. They got all the skills in the world to win, but they can't stop. They can't drag themselves away from the tables. You know, it's just like you at the buffet, huh? Okay. Tell me something, Tommy. If she loses, are you gonna pull that crazy stun of yours? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't twist their arm. I don't put a gun to their head. It's their choice. Plus, it gives them the opportunity to get out from underneath the debt they owe to us. I just don't think that the cops or the feds are going to see it that way. Who's going to know and let them prove it? Besides, the look on their face when I say to them, they can clear their debt without actually working for me. Oh, it's beautiful. It's priceless. You'd take that risk, and so would I. That's true. I would take that risk. All I'm saying is they ain't going to see it that way, and it could cause a lot of trouble. You worry too much, Polly. You worry too much. You're scaring me. You're scaring me. You worry too much. Forget about it. I mean, I know they got the choice. All I'm saying is, uh, hey, they choose between a rock and a hard place. You know what I mean? Gee, that, that's what I like about you, Polly. You're a funny guy. You're a funny guy? Come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> it's on you this time. I got it. I'm gonna find it in front. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Joe here with Arianne. Hello. And we are in beautiful Las Vegas, as you can see behind us, the Stardust Hotel. Uh, Arianne, we just went up on the helicopter tour of the Strip. What did you think of that? It was absolutely amazing, and it's a must-do for any tourist. Yep. Uh, last night, we were at the Paris Tower uh, looking out at the Strip, and, and that is just unbelievable. But the helicopter tour, we'll be cutting in uh, a few shots right now, you can see. 
is just fantastic. If you're coming to Vegas, uh, you know, wherever you check in, just, mm -hmm. you know how it is, you, you see the, the, the attractions and you'll see uh, you know, coupons for the helicopter tour. Take it, very reasonable, uh, great time. But uh, Ariane, you moved here from Chicago and you love the city. Absolutely. I just fell in love with the city uh, about 10 years ago when I first moved here and I made plans and it was the best thing I've ever done. Yep, I've been here for five nights and <laughs> talking to the people and not one person who has moved here uh, said they wish they had it. And a lot of people like Ariane from Chicago, Wisconsin, a lot of the cold weather, weather cities, they move here. But Vegas is beautiful. Uh, the boulevards, uh, you can get around. And, and like we've been talking the last few days, it's crazy on Friday and Saturday night. Yes. But uh, a, lot, a lot of the tourists leave. And then during the week, there's still plenty of people where it's exciting. But if you're uh, renting a car, you can get up and down the strip. Mm -hmm. But uh, usually seven days a week, something's going on here. Oh, absolutely. And even on the holidays, Vegas never stops. It really is 24-7. There's always something to do. And uh, it's just the most exciting place that I know. Yeah. We were in the Paris uh, Hotel Casino last night. And then we went up to the, the, uh, the tower to see the city. That's a beautiful uh, the casino, the Paris. Yeah, it sure is. Actually, we were up 42 stories, and the view was absolutely incredible, breathtaking. Yep. And the other nice uh, casino where I was here at a convention this week was the Venetian. The Venetian's beautiful. And, Arian, you were just talking about Steve Wynn's uh, new casino. We walked by that last night at, like, I don't know, 11, 12 o'clock, and they were, uh, construction was going on. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's everything in Vegas is 24-7, and they are working on it, and it's going to get done so quickly. Yep, so uh, Las Vegas, beautiful city. Uh, it's funny, you moved here, but you, you're you interested in the history of Las Vegas. That was great when I met you, because uh, a lot of people call it Vegas. Right. Actually, when it started out, that was the name of the city, it was right. Vegas. Then they changed it to Las Vegas, and tell us a little bit about that story. Well, uh, the reasoning behind that is because the Spanish um, traders that were on their way to Los Angeles actually discovered Las Vegas. So they renamed it Las Vegas, and Las Vegas is the Spanish word which means the meadows, and that's what the area looked uh, like at the time. It was actually a meadowland. Yeah, because it, Las Vegas is an o oasis because in prehistoric times it was lush, it was a lot of water, mm -hmm. and then when that w uh, went away, all that moisture seeped into the ground, and, and uh, when tra uh, settlers, uh, I shouldn't say settlers, we'll call them explorers for lack of a yeah. better term, <laughs> when they were going to the west coast, I think it, they cut through and found out this beautiful valley here where there's water, and uh, you know Las Vegas is so that's that's a story that uh, you know what I found interesting they had a ban on gambling for like three months in the 20s did you hear about that yes they did they did and uh, it was illegal even to flip a chip uh, for money yep. uh, so uh, those are some of the things going on in Las Vegas always change when you talk to people uh, constant change so that's why a lot of times you'll see people they'll say oh I haven't been there in two years oh you've been there what's changed because there's a new casino going up and but uh, you were saying last night and I talked to uh, some people today they were saying they don't like that idea of putting the kind of gift shops in front of the mm -hmm. casinos because when you walk down the strip you want to see the casino exactly I agree with that um, Las Vegas is just growing so fast that maybe they're not planning as well as they should um, I just prefer the open spaces, and I think many other tourists do also. And they do come here for specific reasons. They want to gamble, they want to drink, they want to have fun. And um, the shopping is just, I think, a secondary concern. So I, I don't really agree with what they're, what they're doing with the shopping, but the yeah. light's out. Yeah, that makes sense because I've been here all these days now, and the only thing I bought so far is one sweatshirt, only because it was cold last night, right? right? Because right. you don't shop out here. Uh, the food is great. The, the the buffets we were talking about, terribles. Yeah. Nice buffet, and then uh, so like they like you've been saying, they get you out here to gamble. Mm -hmm. So the the food is reasonable, the rooms are, but it's a great great city. Mm -hmm. I mean, look just look at the view behind us. But uh, I have to say that the, the uh, going up on that helicopter. Uh, just you've never seen anything like it in your life any city with more lights than that exactly and we were up for about good 15 minutes you'd say yeah and we flew all the way from the south end of the strip down to Fremont Street and back and it was just absolutely breathtaking it was it was uh, we were saying that helicopter uh, pilots got the best job in the world yeah 
But uh, yeah, check them out when you come to Vegas. Uh, just they're all over the place the, as far as their information. The owner has his other uh, company in, in Hawaii, so he owns a, a helicopter service in Hawaii and Vegas. And they also fly during the day uh, to the Grand Canyon mm -hmm. Hoover Dam. Now, how far is Hoover Dam uh, like from the Strip? Actually, from here, it's only about a 30-minute ride in your car. In a helicopter, I know it's going to be a lot shorter than yeah. that. Yeah, so that's another thing. Like when you fly into Vegas, when you look down and you see Lake Mead, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just incredible. You were saying, because I was asking in the summer, because it is so hot out here, uh, where do you go to swim? And you were saying it's really not a uh, swimming type of uh, place around here. Uh, well, if you're used to natural beaches or, or oceans or whatever that, that you live from in your hometown, you're not really going to find it here. But Vegas has some really great beaches. The Mandalay Resort actually has a beach, and that's the best beach to go to. Otherwise, you're going to have to go to California or Lake Mead. But there are opportunities yeah. here in the desert, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, like you were saying, Lake Mead, there might not be natural beaches, but say the people who have a boat, mm -hmm. is it good swimming you know, like, uh, actually it's clean water, mm -hmm. so those people have a, a nice opportunity. Right. But uh, just from the, the sky, Lake Mead was just, uh, I thought it was one of the most incredible sights. You know what's disappointing sometimes when you fly into Vegas is, or any city, <laughs> You might be sitting on the wrong side of the plane where the sights are. Yes. Did that ever happen to you? Yes, it has. It has. And so I always try to get a window seat. Yeah. So you know, when you guys are traveling, always ask for a window seat. That's just a little tip. Yeah. And don't fight over it. But, yeah, if you can yeah. get a window seat, it's definitely worth it. Yep. Uh, and the thing is, I always try to get a window seat. Right. But you know how sometimes you get the window seat on the wrong side? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's really tough. But that's the thing about, uh, I guess, experienced travelers. After a while, they know sit on this side to come into Vegas, but uh, I've never flown into Vegas at night either way, but uh, now I hear like, what do they call it on Friday night, the Friday Night Express, all the people coming into Vegas? Oh yeah, that's what we call the influx of tourists from California, because they like oh, yeah. to come up here for the weekend, you know, yeah. um, and it's just it's just craziness, but we welcome them, uh, it's just a big party, we have a good time, there's so much to do, and we like to go to California as well and get out of the desert every once in a while, so. Right, because you just came back from Los Angeles, yeah. and uh, Vegas and, and Los Angeles, they were basically the highway between them. That's, where the, that's how uh, the two cities were connected. Mm -hmm. But you made a good point earlier that I, I thought was interesting. When we were <laughs> driving back, you were saying the old casinos, they're really glittery yes. as far as the signs. Where now some of them, uh, like the Bellagio, we'll say, and the Mirage, they're nice, but they'll have a, a, a sign where... Uh, some of the, like, we'll say like the Riviera, the Flamingo, uh, much more colorful. And another point you made uh, was the uh, neon uh, graveyard? Yes, yes, that's a must-see. Um, even though a lot of the casinos here are imploded and they just build bigger and better ones as the years go by, they did save a lot of the old signs and they can be found in the neon graveyard here in Las Vegas. Yep. Now we try to get as much, to, like you've been saying also, I learned so much uh, from you, <laughs> that you can't see, you can't even scratch the surface no, in can't. a few days. You like can't. when you leave and you're saying, I wish I could, like there's a Star Trek uh, in, uh, uh, exhibit at the Hilton. Mm -hmm. There's hammerhead sharks at Mandalay Bay. There's, uh, you know, we were talking about David Brenner, yeah, who's a funny right? comedian, Wayne Newton. Uh, Chicago's in town. It goes on and on. Right. So you got to really pick your spots. And what I would do if you, uh, if you're coming to Vegas, go online and see who's going to be in town when you're there, and then you can really, uh, you know, uh, pick an entertainer you want to see. But uh, also, like you were saying, there's a lot of conventions. Mm -hmm. And why do they have a lot of conventions in January, which the conventions I came was in <laughs> January? Well, a lot of them are because it is a little chilly here at night. Um, it does get windy, and um, this is a great place to get away um, in January because it's a lot, probably a lot warmer from wherever yeah. most people come from. You know, yeah. it's, it's nice here in January. Yeah, it is, uh, because I came from, you know, zero degree weather. <laughs> it's, you know, you don't, the first few nights I was here, you didn't need a jacket. Right. In the day, it's nice. Uh, you know, East Coast people are coming out here. They're in short sleeves because yeah. them it's warm. But everybody knows it gets cold in the desert at night. Right. Uh, but it's beautiful out here. I, last time I was here in the summer, July, it was hot, but it's a dry heat. It's mm -hmm. not like uh, Florida or, or even New England. But uh, Vegas is just a, uh, just a great, great city. Uh, any uh, final thoughts? I love Las Vegas, and everybody <laughs> needs to come here at least one time in their life. Do you, don't you agree? I agree. I agree. <laughs> well, Arianne, we want to really thank you for helping us on this show with all the information about 
Old Vegas and uh, just go online. You can see again behind us one of the, the finest studios. Wayne Newton is performing uh, in that studio behind us. But anyway, again, thanks very much for helping us out this week. Thank you, and uh, hi to everybody back home on the, in the Midwest.
television show called U.S. Bounty Hunters, the reality TV show, where all actual real bounty hunters, there's 11 of us, we started filming two years ago, and we decided to put it on television, and we came to the Nappy Show to get it sold. It's a big show. We've got some real good Nielsen ratings already, and we've got a lot of deals and offers at uh, the Nappy Show right now. I'm James, I've been a bounty hunter for about two years, and uh, it's exciting. It's an adrenaline rush, and uh, there's nothing else like it. Hi, I'm Ben Hoppus. I'm Bill Bondsman, and a bounty hunter for 20 years plus. And uh, me and Fred's partners been partners for uh, oh, about eight, nine years. Hi, I'm Seth Bershadsky from Palm Beach Entertainment and Wavecrest Multimedia. We're here at the Navi Show for 2004 to show our content. We're the largest uh, privately owned content provider of English speaking content in the world. We have about 5,500 different titles that we own the underlying rights to, screenplay and music. And we're here to make deals for broadcast, streaming, video, and also for retail. Thanks for coming to our booth. Hi, I'm Marcus Rothkrantz with Astro Films. We're having, we have a show here at NAPTI called Atomic City, a great, fun little show for the whole family, which is an action-adventure comedy, which is uh, basically a Jetsons in Las Vegas in the future. It's got uh, a private investigator who looks a lot like Elvis in a futuristic jet car driving around in Vegas 2025. It's a fun action adventure for everybody who grew up with, with Get Smart, Gilligan's Island, and a little bit of Awesome Powers in there, Men in Black. It's, uh, it's a fun show. Total eye candy, something that will probably go good all over the world in prime time. Look for Atomic City coming to a television near you soon. Dave Skorzik, uh, president of Eat Your Lunch, and uh, we are an independent production company that created a show for the Eight and Under crowd called Bizots. It's a uh, series for the Eight and Under crowd, as I mentioned, that's about a trio of escaped industrial robots that decide to follow their dreams rather than follow their programming. So they escape from the factories of Globo Crud and learn all about growing up a little bit at a time. And uh, each series, each show, features little life lessons told through skit and song. Hi, I'm Noreen. And I'm Daniela. And we're here at NatP to encourage people to learn about our model boxing. We're all perfect head models and we're boxing each other. And our last fight was at the Grand Olympic Auditorium and it was on pay-per-view. And you can pick up that DVD from perfect10.com. And we are going to continue having fights every few months. We have a fight next month in Reno and soon here in Las Vegas. So this is this is real, folks. It's it's real boxing. It's really entertaining. Last fight, I knocked the girl out. And you should check it out. Go to perfect10.com and you can see more about it. And uh, we're, we're not sure what station it's going to be aired on or anything like that, but we're looking to get represented that way. And I've been training myself since since June, and I think she has two. Yeah, I've been training since June, too. We train like two to three times a week for a couple hours a day, regular boxing training, just as agonizing. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ann Potenza, and I am here with Fearless Productions. We are a production company based out of Los Angeles, and this is our first time at NAPI. We are actually exhibiting four shows. We have a game show, which is a 30-minute format, and we have three dramatic series. I'll tell you about our shows. We have the Best Friends Show, and that is a game show. It's for best friends, and it was created by best friends. And it's a cross between the newlywed game with a little bit of Sex in the City personality added into it. We bring uh, four sets of best friends onto the show, and they compete against each other in a question and answer seminar to see how well they know each other. And what we do is at the end of the elimination rounds, the best friend team that wins, they win a final grand prize, which is a shopping spree together and a getaway trip. And that is our half hour moment. Most of the people here at the booth with us today are actually cast members on the Best Friends show. And um, we actually did the pilot myself with my best friend and family members and their best friends. And we actually have a trailer here today of what we were showing for that. And then with our three dramatic series, we have The Jury Room, which is a 60-minute format, and we actually take historical and contemporary court cases, and we take the evidence and the documents, and we take a jury, we take 12 actors, and we give them jury profiles for each of their characters. We give them the evidence and the documents, and they actually go into the jury room and deliberate the case. 
we tape the show, we tape them for about approximately four to six hours, and we edit edit it down into an hour format of what their deliberations are. So it's a very high energy, dramatic piece where we get their prejudices, their personal agendas, the evidence, and it's a very exciting drama. Our other drama that we're here showing is Sorority Row, and that is a story told through the eyes of six sorority members, and they are on college life, and it is basically the trials and tribulations that they go through when they are in, in college life. Uh, the format, we actually are based in a college atmosphere, but the themes of what they go through can be found in any college with any group of people. They actually go through things like dealing with date rape and alcoholism, death, uh, and other relationships with boys and with each other. It's just a very relationship-based drama, and it really shows the closest of what a group of people away from home in college, what they go through and how they support each other. And our last show that we're exhibiting is One Step, and that's a drama based on a man who loses his wife, his job, he hits rock bottom um, at the point of, of despair, and basically his friends and family that gather around him and try and help him get out of his slump, almost like a 12-step recovery program. And this is basically a story of how his journey through recovery. And those are our dramas. We are a new production company. We're actually very creative. And we are here in Nappy getting exposure and interest in our shows. And it's been an, actually an amazing place that we have had um, a lot of people come by in interest. And we'll be following up when we get back to Los Angeles. And it's nice to come back to, to Las Vegas because this is where we grew up. And having the convention here has been a great place to come back to home and to uh, be launching our product. Hi, my name is Anne Potenza, and this is my best friend, Gloria. Hi. Hello, I'm Sally Potenza. This is my best friend, Tony. Hi. We've been best friends for about second grade. Second grade. Been second grade, and we've been best, best friends ever since. Yep, and we're so happy to be a part of the Best Friend Show, and hopefully here we'll be able to get it out there, and someone will get it on TV, and we'll be able to share our stories with everybody, and everyone can share their stories with us. The best part of making this is that we actually are together doing a great project at the same time. It's authentic because it's best friends making best friends show. And all the material that we have is actually real experiences that we've gone through. So it's been fun to create a show that we can take from our own life and we can really incorporate it and just uh, send it out there for fun and entertainment. So it's been great. It's very fun and fresh and exciting. Something that hasn't been done yet. Um, you know, we're just we're happy to be doing it together and hope that um, we can also entertain at the same time. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much and stay tuned. Pretty soon you'll see the best friend show. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hi, welcome to World Asia Television. We are the first English language Asian theme network to be launching in midsummer. Please keep an eye out. Okay. You want to so I'll just come in. Recording at any time. We're based out of. Uh, you can just start with the spill from the beginning, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Hi, welcome to World Asia Television. We're the first English language, Asian themed network to be launched in the US. We'll be launching in midsummer 2004. We're based out of New York and we essentially do. Asian themed programming all across the board, everything from uh, concepts about feng shui and interior decorating to a showdown, which is a competition between martial arts stunt doubles. We also do travel shows, and um, it's a the time. Basically, the time has come for this kind of programming, and we're happy to bring it to you. My name is Grady Spears, and I'm here promoting the show Texas Food uh, at home and on the range. It's a Texas show about cult, the, the Texas lifestyle, the culture, the food, the, the, the whole way we kind of live our life in Texas. And so we're, we're going to shoot 26 episodes, all in location. Uh, 13 episodes will be with celebrities from Texas or with ties to Texas. People like Nolan Ryan and Pat Green and Willie Nelson. And, um, but it's going to be more of a fun, cultural lifestyle, no, no holes barred, Texas size, hospitality kind of show. In Rhode Island, my name is Sandra Nance. I am a model actress living in Las Vegas, and we are at the NAPTI convention. We're in the ADB Films booth, and we're having lots of fun at the convention. Joe is here with us and has told us everyone here all about you guys back home and your station, and 
we hope to see you guys soon from Vegas. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show, Joe Mahan here, as you can see behind me, the Stardust Casino and Resort, we're in beautiful downtown Las Vegas, on the strip, I'm out here for a television convention, trying to pitch Sports Interactive, the show you guys have really been uh, supporting us the last two years, I'll tell you the story, went and saw Fox Sportsnet, so I'm pitching Sports Interactive, I give them a tape, I say, well, I gotta uh, break off, uh, I gotta, uh, I gotta go watch the game. He says, "You got uh, what game?" I said, "The New England." He said, "That's the worst thing you could have said." I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "I'm a Raider fan." So there's my big shot trying to get on Fox Sports Net, but I stick with my team. Patriots are my team. He's a Raider fan. Raider fans, I told him, they've had some good players throughout the years. Cliff Branch, Howie Long, go right down the list. But let me tell you, we're taping this show on the Sunday that the Patriots are going to the Super Bowl, beat the Colts. Peyton Manning, four interceptions, great game, unbelievable. I mean. It doesn't get any better than this. I mean, being in Vegas, Patriots going to the Super Bowl. Where are you from? New England. Oh, man, your team went, went to the Super Bowl. So I'm living large out here in Vegas, but uh, can't wait to get back to, uh, to New England. I know it's cold back there, but not, nothing's like home. You know that. But uh, anyway, just want to tell you to stay tuned. I'm going to be out there with my digital camera, getting uh, some beautiful sights of Vegas. Uh, the, the lights are just spectacular. Just want to send a shout out to Andy Gresh of Sports Radio. He gave me a good uh, recommendation as far as uh, a buffet to go to. The buffets out here are unbelievable. 11 bucks all you can eat. I mean, wow. I mean, I love it. I love it. I love Vegas. I mean, that's all I got to say. So let's continue with the show because I would just be standing here for an hour talking about Vegas. But stay tuned. We'll be right back.
the street. <laughs> hours north of Las Vegas, Nevada is Tonopah, Nevada. 6,200 feet above sea level in the middle of nowhere. And the darkest skies in the country at the Stargazing Park. On the way, stop into Area 51 Alien Center. Tonopah, Nevada, an old silver mining town. Many struck it rich. Area 51, I saw something one night. A light in the night sky turned on a dime. I thought it was military. Maybe, maybe not. Street. <laughs> 